Hello guys, today we're going to be making the complete beginner's tutorial guide on RetroArch on Steam. Now, to start with the tutorial, you want to open your Steam launcher and here into the search bar, you want to type RetroArch. You have it right here, click on it. And now you want from here to add to the library. RetroArch has been added to your account, now it's available in your Steam library. Now, RetroArch is completely free for the moment. In Steam right now, there are 53 cores that you can install they are all right here, shown as DLCs, but they are all free as RetroArch itself. Now you want to go into your library, search for RetroArch, click on it. And now you want to click right here where you see Manage My DLCs. And you want to select every one of them to install them in your PC. You can maybe skip some of them if you don't want to use them, but I recommend you guys to simply select absolute all of them just in case you need them in the future you already have them and the installation anyway is not really that big compared with the standards of games so you can select all of them once you have done that you can close this window right here and click into install you can see this is going to install 726 megabytes and that is with all the cores or dlcs and everything included now the only thing that this doesn't include is all the games you are going to need to provide your ROMs and games yourself. I cannot tell you where to find them, but with a simple Google search about SNES ROMs or Game Boy ROMs, any console that you want to play, you're going to find everything that you need. So let's start with the download. You want to click into next and wait until RetroArch is downloaded and installed in your PC. As long as it's downloaded, let's talk about the difference between standalone that you can download for your PC or the Steam version. Now, the standalone version have maybe a couple of more of emulators or cores that you can download, but it's keeping up really good with the Steam version. And if you need any core that is not downloaded with Steam, you can add them yourself manually. What I prefer about RetroArch in Steam is because you are going to have access to be able to play online with your friends, and even you're going to have the Steam cloud for your save files. That is something really good to have. It's a little bit more it's a little bit more user-friendly to use. Now that it's finished downloading RetroArch itself and all the cores, you can close Steam, and you want to double-click into the icon where you see RetroArch. Now you can see RetroArch is open, but you cannot see anything right here. So you want to click into Manage Cores. Here are all the cores. This right here on the right side tells you that they are installed, so you want to scroll down and to check that you have every core downloaded and installed in your system. Now for this, you can use your mouse and keyboard, or you can use a controller. I prefer controller for all these old systems. And, and one controller that I can recommend you guys is this right here. This is for 8BDO. It's wired, but it works great. I'm going to let you guys the affiliate link in the description down below. Anyway, let's start configurating everything. Now, one small recommendation before you start making all the configuration inside of RetroArch is to create already your rooms folder. Like you see right here, I have created a rooms folder and I have in there separated all the systems that I want to play, what I have games for, and everything in one place. Open once more RetroArch. Now into RetroArch. You want to go where you see import content on the left side. And now you want to click scan director. Now you want to select the drive where you have your ROMs. For me is C in this case. And in here I have it into ROMs. And from here, you can scan this directory or select only for the console that you want to have your games. I'm going to click into scan this directory. Now, depending on the amount of ROMs that you have in your system, this could take a little bit longer or a little bit less time. All that you have to do is to wait right now until this is done. Now, when you finish importing all of your games, you're going to see right here all of the systems of which ones you imported games from. Now let's go a little bit about the settings. First, we're going to set up the controller. If your controller is in recognize, like mine, that recognizes it automatically, you want to click into input. And here you want to scroll down until you see the port one controls. If you have more than one controller, you can configure it in the other ports. Click on it. And as you can see, this ABDO controller, it recognizes itself as an Xbox 360 controller, but I know it's going to work perfectly with it. If you don't see your device right here, if you have different ones, you want to click on it and select the ones that you have. Another thing that you can set up right here are your hotkeys. 
For example, you can have one hotkey for fast forward, for slow motion, to load the state, or to save the state of a game, or to change full screen, anything else. Now, if you mistake it, you can change them right here and set them up as you wish for. Now, for this next step, to make things easier for you, you want to scroll down into the settings and go where you see playlist. Enter in there and you want to click into manage playlist. Now, these are all the systems for which ones I have games. And what you want to do is to click in every one of them and where you see default core, you want to change this. For example, this is for the Neo Geo. You want to scroll down until you find yourself for the Neo Geo core. So every time you open one of these games, it's going to automatically use this core and it's not going to ask you what core to load. The same we can do with the Game Boy Advance. You want to click right here, scroll down until you find Nintendo and go into Game Boy Advance and select each one of them. And do this with every one of the systems that you have games for. Now we can start launching our games. One thing that I do always before that is here into the settings. What this is personal preference is to change the user interface. I don't really like how this one looks. So you want to click in here and go into the menu and change it from awesome, for example, to XMB. I really enjoy this one because it looks like the PSP style one. Now to save the changes, you will have to go into the main menu and to click into restart retroarch or quit retroarch. Now, when you open it, it's going to look like this. This remember me of the old PlayStation 1 of the PSP, and I really enjoy it. Right here, as you can see, you can go and search for your game, and we can run one game. For example, let's choose one of my favorite games of all time. Super Mario War is one of my favorites, and let's try it out. In here, if you want, you can download the thumbnail, so you can see the thumbnail, you want to click into it, and it's going to download it, so every time in the menu, when you go over a game, you can see the thumbnail right there. Now, you want to click into Run to start the game. Now, depending on the system that you have, this is going to run better or worse. Maybe some games, some more advanced or newest games aren't going to run as well if your system is a little bit old. But if a little bit newer, you're going to be able to play most of the games without any problems. The controls are really responsive. And this especially I can really notice this on this game because I have played this in my Nintendo for years and I really know it and the input lag in this one kills me if I find any input lag at all. Let's try something more advanced, like for example the Nintendo 64. Now of course you can do some more advanced things that if you guys want that I make one video about more configuration, filters and anything else, just let me know in the comments down below and I will do it. I'm also going to create one video in the future when I speak how to get achievements because RetroArch itself, it doesn't have any achievements on them directly connected to Steam. Or you could create them with an external website. But this, I'm going to leave it for another video, guys. That is pretty much it for this beginning tutorial of RetroArch in Steam. Now, guys, if you have any more questions or you want me to do more in-depth videos about this, just let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, my friends. If you find the video useful, don't forget to drop a like and a subscriber is more than welcome. See you guys on the next time. Bye bye.